Five of this under my main reason why I can't stand conservatives. Because they're so full of bullshit. And they say bullshit things. Now, yesterday was the 101st anniversary of the Tulsa Race Massacre in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Basically, the African American community considered it the Black Wall Street. They were super successful black people in this country after enslavement. And a lot of the super rich black Americans lived in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And now that we know a little bit more about that story, a tiny bit more, we start to see a clear picture in this country. You know, all the researchers come out and say it all the time. But the general American society doesn't listen to what researchers say. It's like a report comes out. A few Americans will read it. Most Americans won't know anything of it. And then there'll be people who do know about it, who purposely distort, lie, and conflate, so they can justify inaction. That's generally how that goes. The researchers have said that African Americans had just 3.8% of all wealth in America. They own just 3.8% of 116 trillion in all American wealth in this country. Now I did some basic mathematics. 3.8% of 116 trillion is 4.4 trillion. So the African American community owns $4.4 trillion worth of wealth in America. The other $12 trillion is controlled by white Americans. Now, can you see where that might be? kind of an issue. Just a little bit of an issue in a country that claims not to be racist. Can you see how that might be a little bit a wee bit problematic? Just a tiny bit. Kind of like a 112 trillion but a tiny bit of problem. Look, it's good that we acknowledge Tulsa. But let's be clear about something. Tulsa wasn't an outlier. It was the general prevailing order of the day. And Tulsa came after 
the terrorism of 1919. That it looks like 2022 is brewing and bubbling up. In the summer of 1919, they call it the Red Summer in America. White Americans went on the attack in this country towards African Americans. Nothing was spared. Businesses, neighborhoods, Nothing was spared. And the reason for these attacks were really, really suspicious, to say the least. Give you an example. In Washington, D.C., they had a race massacre. Now, here's how the story goes. A rumor circulated that an African-American man had raped a white woman in Washington, D.C. So members of the Army, the Navy, and the Marines, white men, who were members of the Army, the Navy, and the Marines, went into the African-American community in Washington, D.C., and just started shooting at random black people. Now, black people shot back when the police failed to intervene in the matter. Yes, you heard me right. The police didn't do anything when members of the active duty Army, Navy, and the Marines were shooting at black civilians in D.C. in the summer of 1919. They did nothing. It got so bad that the president Sent in National Guards, 2,000 National Guards. To take people's guns away. Yes, they literally took people's guns away at the scene. That's how bad it got. Scores of people were murdered. They don't talk about this, but it happened. Over a suspicious rape allegation. That's what happened in D.C. Summer of 1919. You had Elaine, Arkansas. There were crop workers who wanted to get paid better wages. So they did what most sharecroppers did. They formed a union. Now, Elaine, Arkansas was a town where Black Americans outnumbered white Americans, 10 to 1. And in the county, 3 to 1. So a mysterious rumor started squirreling around in the county that black Americans were going to attack all the white residents. and murdered them. This was a rumor that nobody knows where it started from. 
Now, let me tell you what the newspapers at the time. The Arkansas Gazette. The New York Times. What they opine. They said that he was a socialist agitator. That was working and conspiring. With black sharecroppers. This is what the newspapers ran at the time. So the governor of Arkansas, he impaneled seven of his cronies to do an investigation. Investigate and see if this rumor is true. Are black people planning to kill all the white people in the town? Sounds legitimate. The only problem is the seven individuals that he tasked to do this were all Ku Klux Klan. We're all racist. So they came back to the governor and told him that the black sharecroppers in Elaine, Arkansas were a bunch of socialists who had a plot to kill all the white people in Eileen, Arkansas. They told the governor this. So the governor did what any good governor would do at the time, who's not a racist. He ordered the National Guard, the local state sheriffs, and the Ku Klux Klan to form a pact to kill all the black people in the town. And that's exactly what they tried to do. 500 black Americans were slaughtered. This is a fact. Arkansas, when are you gonna come to terms with this? They just recently put a memorial up in 2019. And somebody quickly snatched the memorial down. And stole the dedication plaque to this massacre. Hey, listen to me, Sour Cream Brigade. You... Judeo-Christian, God-fearing, Jesus-loving people. You did that in 1919. You know you did it. So why are you snatching up a memorial commemoration to a massacre that you clearly conducted? So is it any wonder that only 3.8% when you've had this kind of bullshit happen in this country? No, it's no wonder. None at all. So miss me with the bullshit and really get to work. You know, HRC, the color of change, the NAACP, and just about everybody besides Herschel Walker and Candace Owens agree that a reparations panel to steady and make a determination about what is owed to the descendants of the enslaved. Just about everyone agrees that we should have a commission. I don't really understand why we don't at this point. When we have data, statistics, and numbers and figures like this, right at our disposal. 
when we know the history of what occurred in this nation. I'm not so certain or sure why people choose inaction. One might never know. Look, this is another embarrassment that you can chalk up in a long list of embarrassments for this nation. It's embarrassing that we allow 18-year-olds to run and freely go in IAR-15s when we clearly have a track record of what they do. When they're allowed to purchase one. Don't try to distract and avoid fixing an issue with everything being COVID. You know, this is complete bullshit. They're trying to act as though racism didn't exist prior to COVID. Well, the Eileen massacre in Arkansas was in 1919. Not 2019. So a hundred years ago, nearly. hundred and three years to be exact. Long before COVID. So this nonsense they're giving you and spoon feeding you. That somehow this issue is new in America. Is COVID restriction related in America. Was the Washington, D.C. race massacre in 1919 COVID-related? When members of the military in all the branches, except for the Air Force, decided they wanted to rove into the black community and murder black people because they heard an allegation about a rape story of a black man towards a white woman. Was that COVID related? We have a deep seated issue of racism in this country. It should have been corrected a long time ago. The fact that it's been allowed to get this far is quite problematic at this point. It's probably beyond repair if we're all being honest. But at the very least, we can try to do something. Because in action, we know we know what that course charts. So we should try to do something. They used to say something's better than nothing. I'm a firm believer in that. At least you can go back to the people and say, look, this got done. Don't be so ungrateful. But at this point, you can't even tell people not to be ungrateful. When this nation has provided nothing to be grateful for. So we need to try to do something. And like I
like I said before, don't bullshit. I need to go to people and tell people, hey, you got a cool five meal. Do what you feel. In other words, it needs to be legitimate. I'm not arbitrating any bad deals or going to people and telling them, this is what I got you. No, 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 no. I don't do bullshit. Remember, keep that same energy this year. Everybody's always bragging. This is the richest nation on the planet Earth. And indeed, that's true. So pay up. A cool five meal. To do whatever you feel. That I can sell. I can be like, look, the government's giving out five million to each descendant of an enslaved individual in this country. Five million. That can do a lot of shit. People can do what they feel. And that's a good thing. That avoid a lot of problems. Lots and lots of problems. That I think we would all like to avoid. Nobody feels that they're taken advantage of at that point. Now you will always have some quackpot. Look, this is what they'll do. They'll find a quackpot that says, Five million is not enough. It should be 30 million. They'll find some quackpot. And say, this quackpot says 30 million. Ooh. Don't go and find extremists and present them as normal. Five mil is normal. It's not extreme. Paid maternal family leave. Easy. Free tuition at any HBCU in America. Paid for. Courtesy of Uncle Sam. Now Uncle Sam knows that they owe. Look. Uncle Sam knows that Uncle Sam owes. I know Uncle Sam is a little elderly. But don't play stupid in old age. So Uncle Sam can say, look. You gave me a lot. Now I'm paying your tuition at an HBCU, free of charge. Steady whatever you want. Go be great. It's on me. For indigenous and black women, no more federal and state taxes. At least not for the next 25 years. Now, it's not like you're not going to get taxes from everybody. I specifically said indigenous and black women. The people that made this nation worth 116 trillion to begin with. Go figure. So you're not going to tax them. Because technically, I can say you've taxed them enough. And I would be right within myself to say this. We outlined something like this, the Paul Act. Protect the African American Women Act of 2000, 
22. This is simple shit that your government is going to try to make all difficult because they don't want to do it. You notice how that is. When people try to act as though something is very difficult, and you're like, wait a minute. This seems like a simple task. But this individual or these individuals are making it sound as though it's very difficult. Generally, when people do this, it's not that the task is difficult. It's that they're unwilling to do it. And then they make it sound difficult or more difficult than what the task truly is. So I know there would be a lot of unwillingness to protect African American women in this country, sadly enough, by the party that speaks so glowingly all the time about being the party that freed the enslaved. You hear it all the time from the Republican. We freed the slaves. And I say, well, wait a minute. This is not like a Walt Disney movie, is it? You only freed the slaves. You said you've been captive for centuries. Now you can get out there and make the best of yourself. And the enslaved people went, well, with what money? And the Republican Party said, you don't need any money. Jesus loves you. Don't believe me. But that's exactly what they did. They haven't done reparations. They haven't formed a commission. This is facts. So instead of bragging about what you did to free people, why don't you also mention what you did not to provide anything for newly free people? You can speak about both. And now you have the Democrat. You got about two senators that are really eh, iffy for me. They go back and forth. They're moderates, they say. This is their claim. They're moderates. Joe Manchin in West Virginia and Kirsten Sinema in Arizona. They're moderates. The other 48 Democrats are solid. But you got two moderates. And the Senate is 50 50. Now, you moderate senators, you moderate politicians, listen up. There was nothing moderate about the institution of enslaving. It didn't last for a moderately reasonable amount of time, like most slavery did in the world. They always talk about that. Slavery exists everywhere. Yes, this was true. It did. But in every other place, you were enslaved for seven years. And then you were let go. with rights to own part of the land that you would tilled and work for. Now here come some fuck shittery individuals who enslaved you for centuries and don't pay anything to you. And you try to compare that to the institution of slavery. Please let's not do that. That's an insult to what slavery was, even during that time period. 
very much an insult. This has to get done very soon. Very soon indeed. It cannot wait. Researchers state things for policymakers to act upon. They don't expect the general society to do what policymakers should be doing. They research an issue to inform policymakers to craft laws. This is what researchers tailor their research to. Not Joe Smo at Subway. If Joe Smo at Subway reads the research and contacts his legislature, good on Joe Smo at Subway. But again, Joe Smo is going to contact his legislature. So all research is intended to move policymakers towards crafting policies that are in most cases going to be beneficial to the nation where they live. So let me ask you something. If the research come out and tell you 4.4 trillion of 116 trillion worth of American wealth is controlled by one group and 112 trillion of 116 trillion is controlled by another group. Do you think that's not kind of a big gap? Can you do basic math? 112 minus 4. How many numbers do you have to count to from 4 to get to 112? Quite a few, right? So all of those numbers are a gap. That's a pretty wide gap. So when they talk about the racial income gap, it's pretty substantial. There are folks that's been talking about this for a long time in the African American community. The rest of us just go blah, 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 blah. And don't listen. And that's why the gap keeps getting worse and worse. Inaction. And not listen. So let's try to make a change. Shall we? Because by this time next year. Hopefully. This number is no longer applicable. And we're in a much better space. One can only hope, but we have to be willing to do things to make that occur. Things that some people are saying are difficult, but upon inspection, they're not really all that difficult at all. It's just some people don't want to do what's necessary. And they're laying claim that that task is difficult. I don't think so. Matter of fact, I know not so. It's not difficult to pass legislation. It's not difficult to print money. 
It's not even difficult to send money to American citizens. It happened. Multiple times, stimulus checks. So you got everybody's information. So stop fucking telling us it's difficult. It's really not. Let's get it done. United States Senate. It's not the House and it's not the White House. This is the United States Senate. The House could pass H.R. 40 tomorrow. And it would sit in the Senate for decades. Never to be brought up for a vote. And if it did, it wouldn't get 60 votes. It would die in the abyss of the filibuster. Just like everything else has. This is the excuse in the game they keep wanting to play with you. And I'm saying it's running a bit thin. And the clock is ticking. You better hurry up and get this done. Don't say that I didn't warn you if it doesn't get done soon. Don't say it. Because I know certain people watch this. So you know, I'm warning you, things need to change, pronto. Don't say I didn't warn you, that's all I'm going to say. 